Hi, this is Lou. Welcome to my channel. And it's been a little bit of a while since I got my fine liners out, but I really felt in the mood for some doodling, some kind of uh, mindful or mindless pattern making. And I thought I'd start with a big page of uh, florals that are all slightly different and they're just doodle flowers. So I start by uh, defining an area of my page and I've got a big circle marked out in pencil and I'm going to fill that area. I start by making smaller circles and then build out flower shapes from those circles. So the centres, some of them I'm going to put concentric circles in. I can make them slightly bigger by putting concentric circles around the outside. And then around each one I'm giving a row of petals. And I'm trying to make the petals look slightly different on each one. Don't worry about some of the lines being slightly wonky, or your petals being different sizes and going in different directions. It all adds character to the final drawing. And I finished my first lot of circles uh, by adding petals around the outside of all of them. So any gaps, I'm trying to put circles in there. And then as I add the petals around those, they're going to kind of sit behind the flowers that I've already put in. It can be a little bit tricky to work out where some of those petals go when they go behind other flowers. But making sure that your flowers overlap like that will make the page look really full and vibrant and fun. I'm going to come up with a range of different kind of petal shapes that I can use throughout the pattern. And I want each of my flowers to look slightly different, um, so there's not this kind of exact same. But I can repeat elements on them. So I can repeat the kind of same petal shapes, but then maybe do a different centre and make some of them bigger and some of them smaller. where I reuse a petal shape. I'm trying to keep it kind of slightly further away from where I've put the kind of the first one in. As you as your page gets fuller and fuller, it becomes harder to do that. Um, and you start spending a little bit more time thinking about uh, where to put things and how to space them out and how to make the petals look slightly different uh, different times you make them. As you keep going, you start filling in the page more and more and you'll see less and less of the blank space underneath. And as you go, you kind of start end up making your little flowers that are kind of behind all of the other ones. They get kind of smaller and smaller and you can see less and less of them, but it's still kind of important to put them in. When I'm putting in the really tiny flowers kind of behind everything, the shapes are kind of pretty simple. I'm not really doing the kind of complicated petal shapes there so much. And then when I think the page is full enough and I've got enough flowers on there, I start adding the details and this is the fun bit. I'm adding details both to the centres of the flowers and to the petals. And I decide that all of my details I'm going to use circles and lines and I'm going to make them look different by making them different scales, by colouring them in different ways, and by making some of the patterns random and some of them regular. Colouring areas in with like really deep black will make them really pop and stand out against the rest of the drawing. The first few flowers that I do, I'm kind of establishing a pattern that I'll use for the rest of the, uh, the drawing. I come up with some ideas and then I repeat them in different ways. If you're not sure what to do, um, just creating an outline, a second line around something is always a good way of highlighting it. So 
Sometimes I create a pattern that I don't really like very much. So I like these big circles in black. I wasn't too keen on. But I'm just going to leave them. I'm going to go with it. And when I finish the, finish the final thing, you probably won't notice too much the bits that you don't like. I can make some of my patterns look different by leaving the circles open. I can create different sizes of stripes by putting the lines closer together. And I can place dots inside circles. Circles inside circles. Colour different bits of them. And create different like stripy lines on the petals. In a few areas I decide to use dots because they're essentially really really small circles aren't they? I'm going to keep going, just adding these patterns, adding circles and stripes and dots in different shapes and sizes, colouring different elements in and leaving some of them open. Every few flowers I'll sit back and kind of look at the rest of the page and see what I think it needs. Are there any big white areas that need filling in? Are there any areas that look too light and needs a shot of black, need a, an area colouring in completely? Part of the fun of this challenge is just thinking about how to change the patterns on each one and make them look slightly different. I don't spend too much time thinking about each one. I'll get an idea and I'll go for it. And before you know it, you've pretty much filled in the page with line and detail and doodles. And as you go, I find I get more and more creative about the kind of shapes I can make and the ways that I can fill in space. I hope that you enjoy this one. I hope that you give it a go. And uh, if you do, then um, you can share it with me by posting it on Instagram tagging me at Lou Davis Drawing. So thanks very much for watching today. Take care and happy drawing. Bye.